Welcome to 5-Minute Finance, where we help you understand complex financial concepts and news in just five minutes or less. I'm Larry Mintrink, Certified Financial Planner, Accredited Investment Fiduciary, and Founder of Park Lake Advisors. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that can be uncomfortable to think about, but is nonetheless crucial for financial planning, life insurance. As unpleasant as it is to contemplate, the unexpected can happen at any moment, and it's important to be prepared for the worst. That's where life insurance comes in. By providing a financial safety net for your loved ones, it can give you peace of mind knowing that they'll be taken care of in the event of your untimely passing. But the truth is, most people don't have enough life insurance coverage. In fact, simply relying on group life insurance provided through work may not be sufficient. LIMRA, an organization that tracks the insurance industry, reported that the average coverage for individuals is only $163,000, which is the equivalent to approximately three and a half years of income replacement, half of the minimum recommended amount. And according to a recent survey, more than half of consumers said that their households would be in immediate or near immediate financial trouble if the primary wage earner died today. While having group life insurance through work is certainly better than having no coverage at all, it's important to recognize that it may not provide sufficient protection for most people. Group life insurance is typically provided at a relatively low cost to the employee, but the amount of coverage is often limited and may not be tailored to meet the specific needs of each individual. Additionally, if you leave your job, you may lose your coverage altogether, leaving you and your loved ones vulnerable in the event of an unexpected tragedy. When it comes to individually owned life insurance, there are two main types, term and permanent insurance. Term life insurance is temporary and provides a death benefit for a specific term, such as 10, 20, or 30 years. If the policyholder dies during that term, their beneficiaries receive the benefit from the policy. This limited term leads to term life insurance's main advantage, price. It generally costs less than permanent life insurance, especially if the purchaser is younger. This has the potential to free up funds for other household expenses. Permanent insurance, on the other hand, remains in place as long as the policyholder makes payments. It's designed to build up cash value or a cash reserve that accumulates with the policy. Typically, this cash reserve pays a modest rate of return. However, the policyholder has limited access to the funds. So which one should you choose? Depends on your financial goals and needs. Term life insurance can be designed to provide protection against upcoming expenses, such as putting children through college. Permanent life insurance, on the other hand, can be more useful for covering long-term financial needs, such as estate planning. Many people find that they have a combination of short and long-term needs. And in such circumstances, it may be prudent to have both types, basic level of permanent life insurance coverage, supplemented by a term policy as well. A review of your situation may help determine which type of life insurance is appropriate for you. Several factors will affect the cost and availability of life insurance, including age, health, and the type and amount of insurance produced, purchased. Keep in mind that permanent life insurance policies have expenses, including mortality and other charges. But policies surrender prematurely policyholder may also pay surrender charges and have income tax implications. That's all for today's episode of 5-Minute Finance. I hope you found it informative as well as helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email us at info at parklakeadvisors.com or reach us by phone 517-887-9905. If you're listening to our podcast or watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Be sure to follow us on social media platforms such as Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter for more quick financial bites. Thanks for joining, and until next time, happy learning.